ready, Mr. Page. Thank you. Good morning. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. The Board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Chairman, Commissioners, preliminary matter on the AM docket. Case number one under continued cases. Utah Liquors 115-17 North Utah Street. Here for violation of 4.16 illegal conduct. Violation of rule 3.12 general welfare. <coughs> this case has been postponed and will be rescheduled for another date and time. <coughs> on the regular AM docket. Los Amigos Restaurant, 5506 Harford Road. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. An application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license under Article 12-1603C1 small i small i requiring $200,000 in capital investment, fixtures and facilities, a seating capacity for a minimum of 75 people, this is a request for live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. Council, identify themselves, please. Becky Witt on behalf of the Hamilton Hills Neighborhood Association. I'm Melvin J. Kadensky on behalf of the applicants. Good morning. Um, would those who, uh, who are here raise your right hands, please, be sworn. Now, do you swear or affirm the testimony conducted in this hearing? Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Mr. Kadensky. This is an application for a new Class B license. Ms. Uh, Feria had, owns the property, and she was a prior licensee there for about 10, 12, maybe 13 years uh, for an interim period uh, when she had sold the license to an, another um, a couple of individuals which were not really good operators. They wound up losing the license, so she took the property back and now wants to go back in uh, the uh, uh, business uh, and um, has applied for the new Class B license. Um, uh, preliminarily, they have sat down then uh, with Ms. Witt in the uh, Hamilton Hills Neighborhood Association have come to an agreement. Um, and if you want, we can submit it at this point or... That's fine. Um, and there's an agreement that if there's some uh, typos or, or some things that are missing in there uh, that we will Thank agree you. to um, you know, clean it up. But Virtually, we just had it done, and um, I'll t mention. Thank you. State your name and address for the record, please. Okay. I'm Rosa Faria. Um, my address is in uh, 5 Tarbon, Lutheran, Maryland, 21093. Um, the business is 5506 Harford Road, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, now, Ms. Ferry, you got your son, Marco, here. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, right here. He can state your name. He can get a speaking part here. That's yeah. your name. Marco Carrasco. All right, and you and your mom have gone over the agreement with the Hamilton Hills. Can we get him to spell his name, please? M-A-R-C-O, last name C-A-R-R-A-S-C-O. You and your mom have gone over uh, this agreement uh, with the Hamilton Hills Association, is that correct? Correct. And you understand they're asking, and you're agreeing to make that part of the license? Correct. And you agree to all the terms and conditions with regard to the hours of operation, uh, the type of entertainment, and so forth? Correct. And um, just coincidentally, or in addition there too, it depends how you want to look at it. Um, I, I asked Marco to bring a, a bunch of the menus down. It's a full scale restaurant, you'll see. For whatever reason, he must have fell on his head this morning. I got a brain freeze. He didn't. But we'll supply that. He has it on his phone. I don't know that you want to go through it. Um, but I also would submit the seating plan. Um, the place sits around uh, 200 people, and we had Mr. Uh, Jonathan Milling do an appraisal. I've given uh, Ms. Witt a copy of it, and, and I think it's interesting. Uh, he shows two, uh, 700 and 78,000, which is well over the number, and um, I think it'd give you a chance to take a quick look at it. Thank you. What was the number again? Is it in there? I got a couple. Of Thank you. Okay. $778,155. Yeah, if you look at the pictures, you can see it's well. Uh, Thanks. Well, within that limit. And there's outdoor seating? Yes, that's pursuant to, uh, and you have it in your packet, a BMZA mm -hmm. uh, thing, which we got when Ms. Ferry was there um, back in that, ta that time. So this uh, place was in operation, and have they made all these renovations since then? No. 
it's this place years ago was um, I originally put the license there um, was called Forte de Sol. A fellow named Dick Rosas and Theo Pepe's did it, and afterwards they came into the project and then they made the improvements and also got the outdoor table. Uh, so they improved and it and got someone else to operate it for a while. You know, they were there like 12, 14 years, and then they held a person that came in, which contrary to what I said, they should have never let him do come in here because he was the original El Bandito and he took the business and caused problems with the neighborhood and then the result of which he left and the license was encumbered and they died so uh, they had come back uh, and said this is you know our restaurant we want to go ahead and uh, reopen the restaurant and um, it's open now. Restaurant's open now. Okay. And this lady you work there as well? Can you come up to the microphone because we need you to spell your last name. Okay. My name is Regina Lansinger, L-A-N-S-I-N-G-E-R. Okay, and we have several letters of um, right. recommendation from Hamilton Main Street, is that yours? And then uh, from Laraville, from uh, Sandra Kreider, and um, from a Brian Truax, Laraville Business Association. I guess you've all seen these. Okay. So that all these will be received, as well as the exhibits and the MOU. Um, anything else, Mr. Kanowski? Um, I, th I think they got together and they're, you know, on the right uh, track, um, along with uh, working this out. And in, in the beginning, and, and the delay really was, uh, maybe it was me, I caused it, because I wasn't really available at the time and was having some surgery. But I think once we got together, we ironed most of, 100% uh, of what was going to be uh, and there's agreement that there's some, if the names are not in there correctly, we'll agree them to. Uh, we'll let you clean up your agreement yeah. if you have a problem. I still cry in authorship in that from line of thinking. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Witt, did you have anything to add? Sure. I just wanted to highlight just a couple of the provisions in the agreement that we came to. Um, on the first page, um, we talked a little bit about live entertainment. It's mostly going to be acoustic, but the licensees can ho host open mic nights no more than two nights per week, which shall end no later than 11. Um, this w it's important to the community that this establishment operate as a restaurant with alcohol service um, and not operate primarily as a bar. So um, there's an understanding that it will operate that way and that the kitchen will not close um, until n one hour before close closing time of the business. Um, hours of operation are a little bit uh, more limited, so it's 11 a.m. to 11, Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to midnight, Monday, sorry, Friday and Saturday, and 11 a.m. to 10 on Sunday. Um, and then also that permits should be obtained for all work performed. Um, the community had some concerns about um, some previous work that was done on the building that may or may not have been permitted properly. So um, that's important to that's them. In, uh, that's all in the agreement. It's all in the agreement. I just wanted to highlight those um, as being the most important parts of the agreement. Um, and to my left are two of the officers and board members of the Hamilton Hills Neighborhood Association who are here in support. Um, can you tell uh, us their names? Or sure. Can you tell us their names? <laughs> yeah, they can introduce themselves. I'm Mia Blom, president of Hamilton Hills Neighborhood Association. B-L-U-M? B-L-O-M. O-M, okay. Shannon Chorba, sorry I'm sick. Uh, my last name is C-H-O-R-B-A and I'm the secretary of Hamilton Hills. Good, good morning ladies. Good morning. And um, I think Mia just wanted to add one quick thing. Sure. I just wanted the board to know that we're very excited to support this restaurant as they come back and they bring great food and activities to our community. Um, we are glad that we were able to work out a, uh, have a great understanding as far as an MOU and we look forward to working with them. Thank you. Uh, commissioners have any questions? No questions. No questions. Yeah, something else? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. I congratulate you all on getting together and resolving any issues that you have before you head down this road. Um, on the basis of the materials contained in the application, uh, the exhibits received today, including the agreement um, between the licensees and the Hamilton Hills Neighborhood Association, um, the testimony received and the proffers from council. I would vote to approve the application for new Class B beer, wine, and liquor uh, restaurant license with live entertainment, outdoor table service, all subject to the terms of the uh, MOU to the extent those are enforceable by law. I concur. 
on the same bases, and I vote to approve the application for a new Class B beer, wine, and liquor restaurant license with live entertainment and outdoor table service subject to the terms of the MOU to the extent it is enforceable by law. So I join my colleagues in uh, approving the application for a new Class B uh, license with live entertainment and outdoor table service uh, subject to the terms of the memorandum of understanding to the extent it's permitted by law. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, folks. Thank, Thank you. I'd right. call Zippus for the record. What is it one, letter of support, Hamilton, Laurelville, Main Street. What is it two, letter of support, Laurelville Improvement Association. What is it three, support from Laurelville Business Association. Absence of the one, MOU. Mark's Dream Team, LLC, trading as Bentley's, 885-89 North Harwood Street. This is a Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license, an application, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment. Please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Are you okay to stand there, ma'am? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Would I, could I ask you all to raise your right hands, please? Yeah. And could each of you tell us your name, please? I'm Glenda Laws. Good morning. Good morning. Glenn Bideur. Good morning. Oh. Janet Petaway. Good morning. So, so those are the three names on the uh, on the license, Bryson? They are. Okay. Okay. Uh, so who's going to speak? I. Okay. Mr. Bidoom? Yes. Um, Can you push the mic okay. around? Thanks. Um, good morning again. Um, it's kind of new for me, so. That's okay. Take your um, time. We are uh, planning to transfer a liquor license, a previous restaurant at 885 North Howard Street. Historically, it's been a restaurant, I think, for a couple decades under different owners. Uh, we have a memo understanding from the Mount Vernon Belvedere Association and a support letter. All of the members here on the liquor license have completed their awareness program. Um, and... Um, the memo of understanding, Ms. Riker was very pleased that we were bringing some, um, some community-based entertainment in. And have um, you all agreed that the terms of the MOU will be binding on you? Yes. Yes, we do. On your license? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What is the nature of the live entertainment? Uh, it'll be live jazz and R&B on two nights a week, Friday and Saturday. Okay. All right. Um, and that's all. Uh, do you have a copy for us? Of yeah, the I do. Memorandum? I bought one, which I didn't know if you had it or not. I don't think we do. Yeah. Do we? Uh, okay. And, and you and said uh, that the last page there is the uh, support letter. Okay. Uh, our hours of operation will be Tuesday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., closed on Monday. Sunday will also be 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., I believe. May we keep this copy? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you need uh, copies of our certificates of awareness as well? I don't think so. Uh, you, you can show them to us if you want. <laughs> and do all three of you have experience? We do not. This not at all. Perfect. Okay. Brandon. So you, okay. Uh, are you, so you're fam you are you familiar time. with our rules and regulations? Uh, okay. Uh, from the classes that we took, we did get some information. If you yeah. need any further information or help, our staff would be happy to assist you so that you don't run afoul of any of our rules and regulations. That. So that, to that end, we, we do plan to hire some experienced uh, <laughs> people in the restaurant it's business. It's easy so, to uh, get in trouble so if you don't right. know about things, and so um, we want people to have the opportunity to. I need yeah. just one person to speak at a time. So I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just He's talking to me. Okay. <laughs> um, to that end, if I may, um, current capacity for that building is less than 100 lower levels, 4,380 square feet. So we kind of have two of the check boxes off of the fire marshal's office. However, we're going to sprinkle the building uh, so that we can avoid any issues and have a good life safety uh, issue. I'm a retired fire chief, so safety's big with me. And how many people do you intend to employ? Uh, Twelve. And that includes a chef and sous chef. Do you have any security? How is that? 
we haven't discussed it yet uh, because we're not going to be a nightclub. We're just mostly a restaurant with a lounge on the upper level. That's uh, the reason why we're going to sprinkle the building. So we wanted to have, like I said, the community-based uh, live entertainment, good food. You know, after your meal, if you want to go upstairs and kick your shoes off and sit in front of the fireplace and, you know, those type things there. We have done no uh, reconstruction, just mostly cosmetic. Okay. So, uh, redoing the kitchen, stuff like that, and the decor. So the building is going to remain as, as it was, I guess, the last previous, at least two owners phased in and cookers, I believe. Any questions? No okay, thank you, sir. Uh, on the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the testimony um, received, and um, the evidence oh, that's dear. been submitted, including the memorandum of understanding, um, I would vote to approve the application for transfer with live entertainment uh, subject to the terms of the memorandum of understanding. I concur on the same basis and vote to approve the uh, application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment uh, subject to the terms of the MOU to the extent it's enforceable by law. I concur uh, with my colleagues to uh, approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment subject to the terms of the memorandum of understanding to the extent it's permitted by law. Good luck, folks. Good luck. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you all Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Sir, I call Zibis for the record. App Exhibit 1, MOU. App Exhibit 2, Love Support from Mount Vernon and Belvedere Association. Thank you. Mona LLC, <coughs> trading as Busy B, 4500-04 Erdman Avenue. This is a class BD7. <coughs> Beer, wine, and liquor license and an application. <coughs> a request to add live entertainment. Please come forward. Would you raise your right hand, please, <coughs> ma'am? Raise your hand. Thank you. Swear or raise it. Do you raise swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. What is your name, ma'am? My name is Suba Sirtsen. Um, Sir Shan, is that how you say it, Ms. Sir Shan? Okay. So, what is the nature of the entertainment? Uh, we would like to. What kind of? Add the now is the liquor, st liquor store and, and then bar, but uh, we would like to add the <coughs> entertainment, live entertainment. What type of entertainment? I mean, we talk about like, large bands like sometime, or karaoke? Uh, uh, sometime we have a restaurant also. There's 70, 67 seat over there, and sometimes customer comes there. They want to do the birthday party. Sometimes they want a music, like DJ something once in a while. Okay, I understand but what you're saying. So it's mostly going to be DJs for private yeah. parties? Yes, sir. Okay. You're not hiring Bruce Springsteen to come in or anything like that? No. no. Okay. Because <laughs> of the, we have uh, another restaurant in here, 911 North Charles District, Mount Vernon. We have the same thing. Sometimes there's a party, something. We can invite the customer who wants to karaoke. Sometimes 30, 40 people, 60 people, they want to do the birthday party, something like that. And we're going to use only that time. We have already over there in the 911 North Charles Street here. So we would like to do also 4,500. We would like to do that one too. Customer wants to sometime. Why don't I have a party here? No DJ, something like that. And you only will, that person. You will make sure that whatever music or entertainment you have it doesn't offend your neighbors, right? Keep the, the volume down a little Not bit. Not too loud. No, 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 man. Okay. Um, okay. Do commissioners have any questions? No further questions. How long have you had this business, ma'am? Uh, that business, like yeah. uh, three and a half, four years now. Okay. okay. It's running four years soon, sir. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you then. On the basis then of the materials contained in your application, I see you've got um, a zoning permit mm -hmm. for it. Um, and the um, testimony that you've provided us this morning, I would vote to approve the request to add live entertainment. Thank you. I, I concur and vote to approve the request to add live entertainment. I concur and uh, would approve the uh, addition of live entertainment. Thank Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. Here you go, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Thank you. You're welcome. Yes.
Pearls Investments, Inc., trading as Pearls Place, 2578 Holland Street. This is a Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license. A request for a hardship extension under Article 12-2202. Please come forward. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, the address of 2578 Holland Street uh, did receive a letter from Zoning Department dated 51718. Uh, in terms of BD7 compliance. It must comply within two years. <coughs> Would you raise your right hand, ma'am, please? We, we swear or affirm <coughs> the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Can you pull that microphone down to you? Are you Miss Holland? Yes, I am. Okay, so you wrote us a letter uh, requesting a hardship. Um, can you tell us more about that? Um, yes, I asked for the request for the hardship due to um, the fact that I had surgery, two surgeries, and um, I be running the business, you know, by myself. And right now, I have a contract for the, um, the business, but it haven't been finalized yet. And soon as it's finalized, then they wanna um, fill out the application, you know, to transfer, to the, transfer license. the license. And you've been everything. closed since September 18, is that right? Correct. Okay, and so you're asking for um, 180 days? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, all right. Um, the commissioners have any questions? I don't have any questions. You do reference that there are water damages, too, in one of your letters? Did you? Are, is yeah, that it part was, of the it was just um, from the the pipes. Okay. The, all right. So I want to make sure we. But everything was um, okay. Okay. All right. So thank you. I just want to. Um, Show Mr. Akras that you can write a letter that only has one line in it. <laughs> 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 I never want to. But I'm, but I'm, I'm <laughs> in, in fairness to, to Mr. Akras, because I have to defend my good man, uh, I will say that Ms. Holland actually had to end up writing two letters because yeah. there was a follow-up one. A total of three letters. <laughs> three <laughs> three <laughs> sentences. So, so, right, three sentences. Yeah, your brevity. Um, <laughs> So anyway, on the basis <laughs> of the materials contained in your application, your letters to us, and your testimony, I would vote to approve the um, extension for 180 days. I concur on the same basis and vote to approve the extension for 180 days. I concur and uh, approve the hardship extension for up to 180 days. Good luck, ma'am. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. No, as if it's for the record. <coughs> Rosewood Food Concepts LLC, trading as Wood Rose Barbecue, 1605 Saulgrave Avenue. This is a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. A request for hardship extension under Article 12 1705, small b. Please come forward. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of uh, applicant. Okay. Is he going to testify? Uh, no. Okay. So you've written a letter saying you want an extra 90 days to uh, execute a closing on the license? Yes, that's exactly right. Um, after the board approved um, Mr. Perron for the, the transfer, um, and in fact, I want to remind the board, he had, he had entered into a good neighbor agreement with the um, Mount Washington Merchants Association. Um, he ran into some financing delays that almost pulled the plug on the entire project. Um, fortunately for him, in the meantime, he's gotten everything else done as far as a use and occupancy permit, including those four inspections that have to be done, fingerprinting, uh, alcohol management awareness, uh, certification, and um, and every yeah, and literally everything else except for the three transfer documents, the transfer authorization, affidavit of compliance, and uh, in this case, bill of sale because there's no alcohol transferring. Um, so he's 50, he's going to be closing March 1st. And that's uh, that's within the window, so we'd ask for the 90 days. Thank this you. This is Mr. Piron here. It sure is. Yes, sir. Um, commissioners, have any questions? No questions. No questions. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Fogelman. On the basis of your request and other information contained here and your um, proffers to us this morning, I would vote to grant the 90 day extension. I concur and vote to grant the 90 day extension. I uh, also vote to grant the transfer of hardship extension up to 90 days. Good thank luck. you. Good luck. Thank you very much. No, <coughs> Holland's Place, <coughs> LLC, trading as Mirancho Restaurant. 
1114-16 Holland Street. This is a Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. A request for transfer of hardship extension under Article 12-1705, small b. Please come forward. For the record, Melvin J. Kanetsky representing the applicants. Uh, would you all raise your right hands, please? <coughs> we swear or affirm the testimony which you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Are you Mr. Truxon? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Kanetsky. This is a request they had um, completed in most everything. There was two problems. One was a bulk transfer permit wasn't um, being able to gotten it within time. And number two, there was a um, question with regard to the control of the Treasury Compliance Division for the prior owner. Now, in the meantime, <coughs> the Comptroller's Office has sent the letter to the Liquor Board. It should be uh, in the main file. If not, I've got extra copies here. And the bulk transfer permit uh, has been gotten. So I think they're probably within, you know, uh, a week or two to finish everything up. But in the meantime, that 180-day period was running out. You so know, you're seeking an additional 90 days? Yeah, I don't think we'll need it, but, you know, we, we have everything, but it, you have to come down and ask uh, if it's okay. Okay. Um, uh, do we, I don't know that I, we have we that don't. letter, do we? I, do uh, we have you a know copy? that letter? I, I asked the guy, I don't know, where did he go? I talked to the controller's office. Happened. You got it, okay. Stace? Statement, statement. They said they sent it three times, two times. They won't okay. send it to me because for some reason they are afraid if I get it, I'll we have copy it. Chairman. Okay, it? thank you. You have it? No. Yes. All right. Questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. On the basis then of the materials um, contained in our file uh, and uh, in the record here and your proper, um, Mr. Kadensky, I would vote to approve the 90-day extension. I concur and vote to approve the 90-day extension. I concur and vote to approve the 90-day extension. Thank Bye. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. No exhibits. One stop liquor and shop. <clears throat> 1524 Cypress Street. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. A request for a transfer hardship under Article 12-1705, small b. Please come forward. Thank you. Good morning, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of applicants. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, sir, please? We swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And I'm joined by Ananda Gimri, who is a, an applicant on the, on the docket, and he, I don't plan for him to testify if, the, if my proffer will suffice for the board. Um, You're in the same situation, need yes. a bulk transfer permit? Yes, and I hate to pile on, but I do think it's instructive for the board to know um, some of the intricacies of, of what it takes once the transfer goes through. And, and as Mr. Kodinsky had, had spoken about, sometimes when you're dealing with the state, um, is this the comptroller's office that we're talking yes, about? Yes, yes. And when you're dealing with them, sometimes they will send out a hold notice to the liquor board um, once, once a transfer notice is even filed, but way before the, um, the completion of the transfer, which is supposed to be 180 days or, or so after that. And what happens is even if the applicants clear the good standing or clear their taxes or clear their holds, there is not a, any kind of automatic mechanism for the state, for the liquor board to act, to inquire, and no mechanism for the state to say, oh yes, they're, they're paid now, so we're gonna send it to the liquor board. So it's always a manual process where you gotta co contact somebody at the state, have them send emails to the, to the liquor board staff. That adds time to the process. That happened in this case. Um, what also happened in this case that was unprecedented was the bulk transfer permit application was delivered to the applicant's accountant and somehow there was a misunderstanding and um, it wasn't filed. It was presumed to have been filed. And How come the accountant can get it but Mel Kadensky can't get it? it the, the, since I started doing this, the taxpayer privacy laws, they will, even if I have the CR number, they make you send them a power of attorney a week in advance. It's extremely difficult to get even basic information. So the only way you can do it is even if it's not your client, do a conference call with them and make and listen to what they're telling you as far as how many taxes are owed, et cetera, et cetera. So okay, these things are, yeah, days. I don't mean to, to complain, but these things do get mired down sometimes. And so we appreciate the extra 90 days. We are literally in that time done. We have, a, we have the use and occupancy permit, um, affidavit compliance, all those documents signed, the holds have been removed, and the bulk transfer permit, to my knowledge, is in process right now with the state. Okay, Commissioner? No questions. No questions. 
All right, thank you. On thank the you. Extent of the uh, materials contained in our files and application and your letter and your proffer, Mr. Fogelman, um, I'd vote to approve the 90-day extension. I concur and vote to approve the 90-day extension. I vote to approve the 90-day extension. Thank you all. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. No exhibits. Um, so, Mr. Page, is that the morning docket? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. The board is in recess until 1 p.m. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Page. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Now starts the PM docket of the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Preliminary matter on the PM docket, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, case number two, 3351-53 Greenmount Avenue. Here for violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. That case has been postponed. Um, Call the. Are we going to go to the docket then, Mr. Page? Or do we have any other postponements? No, other, no further postponements. I'll call the first case. Oh, before you do that, may I docket. take just a moment? Oh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the gentleman is disrupting, disrupting <laughs> our us in the set of proceedings the here. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it on. Leave it on. It's nice. It's nice background. He brought his own background music. Um, He's always wanted to do this, Mr. Chairman, I think. <laughs> John, could you assist? John? Someone. <laughs> uh, Agent Howard, would you stand up, please? <laughs> I'm not going to arrest you. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, gentlemen here to my right, Agent John Howard, uh, at 4.30 today will be leaving our services after 43 years of service to the City of Baltimore and 13 to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners of Baltimore City where he has uh, provided excellent service and great dedication and hard work uh, and we are very very grateful to him I think there was supposed to uh, be a little celebration but the weather <laughs> postponed it but that is <laughs> going to happen uh, before long but John let me uh, congratulate you on your retirement I hope you have it. Best of luck to you. Yes, best of luck. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> well, it's been a very interesting past 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, you know, enjoyed working with the Liquor Board, this commissioner, as well as the past commissioner and the staff. And it's, you know, at 73 years, you know, 43 years, 73 years, oh, I just felt it was time to go on well we'll miss you yes yeah. good luck to you sir good luck thank you mr page you want to go to the docket then yes thank you mr chairman drinkery 203-09 west reed street this is a class bd7 beer wine and liquor license here for violation of rule 4.01 a sales to minors on november the 7th 2018 Please come forward. For the record, I'm Jay Pence, representing <coughs> licensing. Um, good afternoon. Would everyone raise their right hands, please, to be sworn? I swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Admission or denial, <coughs> Mr. Pence? I'll do an admission since uh, John's retiring. Uh, <laughs> he appreciates that, as do we. Um, so does your client want to explain anything? Well, or? in this instance here is that the the problem is they were, they were very short staffed um, in regard to some of the employees and uh, quite frankly they were trying to do more without enough people to go ahead and uh, check everybody and as a result of which um, the um, gentleman um, served the um, Ms. Miller had uh, admonished him had suspended him for three or four days uh, has uh, got him to take the alcohol awareness um, uh, course um, again and instructed all her employees um, that no matter if they're short staffed or not short staffed uh, they should um, go ahead and make sure they um, uh, check um, the um, parties who are there trying to buy alcoholic beverages and were they cooperative with you uh, agent Chris Malice from the liquor board they were um, I'm still waiting we had spoken to the manager and we had asked for a security plan because it seems like every time we come 
whether it's a disturbance or underage, there's always a security breakdown. So I'm still waiting for that from him. He has not provided that to okay. me. Okay, I'll make sure you get it. Okay, thank you. Do commissioners have any questions? No questions. No questions. Okay, anything else, Mr. Kadeski? No, I mean, like I said, it's not a phenomenon you're not going to see you know, over and over again. And uh, for somehow in Baltimore County, they do the same thing up and, up and down New York Road, hitting the places. And I thought they went over the edge when they went to the Pepper Mill. And, <laughs> and for sermon miners, I said you were better off going over rucks <laughs> and give a, 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 a less of a beef over there. Um. Understood. Okay. So uh, on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents, the um, uh, admission, the testimony received, I would find a violation of uh, Rule 4.01, small a, sale to minor on November 7, 2018. Um, this licensee had a, another sale back in May, um, was fined. So I would impose a $1,000 fine and give her 30 days to pay it. I concur and find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on November 7, 2018, and I agree with the imposition of a $1,000 fine. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and would uh, concur with the imposition of a $1,000 fine. Good luck. Thank Good luck. you. And I'll, we'll get that security plan for you, John. Thank you. I want to call this for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, uh, <coughs> Agent Chris Malice. Thank you. Okay. Calling the next case, uh, Nikiambi Jean Lima, Lima Systems LLC, trading as Club o Okapai, 2219. West Pratt Street is a Class D beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct. Is there anybody present for the hearing? Uh, Agent Chris Moss is going to check right now, sir. Okay. Thanks, Stacey. Agent Chris Miles has indicated that no one is outside present for this case. Do you want to do the others and see if they show up? Okay. Yes, sir. Calling the next case, uh, Jaime Balbuena Bravo y Alejo Martinez, El Oasis Restaurant y Discotec Incorporated, trading as El Oasis Restaurant y Discotec. 3919 through 21 Eastern Avenue. It's a class BD7 beer wine liquor license, violation of rule 3.12 general welfare, and a violation of rule 4.16 illegal conduct. Um, could you all raise your right hands, please? We swear or affirm the testimony of the truth that the given this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Gentlemen, what are your names? Um, I'm Sergio Sanchez. He's Javier Martinez. He's my uncle. Okay. I work with him at the at the so Oasis. Are you Alejo? No, <laughs> he's Alejo. Yeah. And your name is? It's Christian. Christian? Yeah, Sanchez. Okay, Mr. Sanchez, um, I don't know whether you or Mr. Martinez want to answer, but the charges are both from November 24, 2018, and they involve the music playing loud and it being observed, and then uh, having been asked to reduce the volume of the music. Uh, do you admit that that happened or do you deny that that happened? Yeah, we admit that that happened. Okay. Do you want to tell us what happened? Um, yeah. At that night, the, the inspector came and, and he told us that the music was too loud. So are we talking about um, DJ music or what kind of music? Uh, it was DJ music that night. Okay. We, we didn't even have um, a band that night. Usually we have some local bands so playing there, but that night we only had a DJ. And did you get a 311 complaint? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you probably should identify yourself for the record. Andy Perez, Board of City Legal Board. Okay. So you were responding to a 311 complaint and you went and heard loud volume? Yes. Okay. Um, and then um, the inspector asked you to turn it down and he says in his report that you did. Yeah. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. Um, anything further? No, I um, told him to lower the music. He immediately complied. Uh, the music was really loud that night. Uh, I think that was the last complaint I personally responded to at that location. That's about it. Um, 
Did you want to add anything else, Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Martinez? Yes. Um, when he came that night, you know, I, s I spoke to him and kind of explained what happened. Um, sometimes we have like like two DJs playing at, at the same time. Um, when they uh, when they change, or, you know, when the other one's gonna play, sometimes they start playing the music a little bit loud, but they don't play it for a, for a long time. And exactly at that time when he was coming, that's, you know, when the change was happening. And that's why when he entered, he's gonna hear the music loud. Yeah, I know right now it's loud, but at that night, I, I was even walking around the place, like a block away, going around, you know, trying to make sure that, that the music wasn't loud because um, in the past we had that, that problem and you know we've been working on it trying to insulate the doors yeah, and someone obviously made a complaint some time earlier yeah. that uh, caused the inspector yeah. to come out there correct and and then now we even had like two doors that that we had on it and, and i think you know that that will fix the problem now because uh, you know we don't want to be coming back here you know with the, with the same problem over and over so okay even like uh, uh, I think on the on the twelfth of this month, we have another inspector going over there, uh, which he told us that I guess he received the same call that the music was loud. But when he went to the place, you know, the music wasn't loud. I think it was Inspector Ham, I think. Um, and he saw the new door, the new door that we have at at the door. Now we have like three doors actually. I have pictures. You have three what? Three doors. <laughs> like to enter our place oh so yeah. to try to muffle yeah. the sound yeah. or something okay um okay the commissioners have questions no questions no questions um do you know inspector perez that they were violated back in 17 for general welfare twice was it the same kind of complaint it was the same issue it was what it was the same issue for loud music loud same music. issue okay. and in 16. do you know what it was in 16. no yeah. okay um do you want to add anything else sir no yeah. okay thank you. well thank you on the basis then of uh, your admission of these violations uh the testimony received and the materials contained in the charging documents i'd find um that the licensees violated rule 3.12 general welfare on november 24 2018 and rule 4.16 illegal conduct on november 24 2018. Uh, mr martinez mr sanchez this is a bad record um We've had the license since 2005, and this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth time you've been before the board. That's a very bad record. And coming back on the same um, violations is also um, something you've got to get under control. You were fined the maximum for it before, and it's not seeming to work. Um, but we were, you know, Working on the place, you know. That way, you know, we don't have to come here, but That's right. you know, we have like, like I told you guys, we have like three doors for the place, so the music will. And when, w when were those doors installed? I have pictures from the place. Like the when? last door was like the this month. Oh. Like oh. Before the the twelfth. Have you been back out there, Inspector? No, I haven't. Uh, he knows the place. <laughs> I can it, uh, the I'm picture. familiar with the place. Uh, bef yeah. Right after the violation from last year. A set of door was installed, and yeah, as per his picture, there's a new set of door yeah. that you had to go through three doors to get into the talisman, basically. W will that help with the problem? I think it would. So, uh, according to Miss Russell, the 2016 was also for loud music. Yeah. It seems to be a continuing issue. Yeah. Um, were you the one who went out in 2017, Inspector Perez? No, sir. I don't know, Commissioner, because you got to help me. I don't know what to do with this one. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm troubled that this continues to be a problem with respect to loud music, and right. I'm not sure you're, you're getting the message. Mm -hmm. right. I'm, and I'm not convinced that an adding additional doors is going to – what you haven't said is that you've lowered the music. What you yeah, haven't said is that, is that maybe having two or three different DJs or music playing at a time probably isn't a good idea. Yeah. Um, oh. But you know that's uh, that's what we're doing now. You know, like every time that we have a, a, a band or DJs, you know, we always walk outside and, and see how loud is the music. You know, we're always you know trying to keep it down. 
and la last when I just, you know, there I'm just playing the music loud, you know. Last time we, it was over two or two thousand. Um, fine. All right. Yeah, because we missed uh, a court date last time. We didn't get the notification of the court, so we have to. Uh, they suspend us like for seven days. That's why uh, I guess we got the the biggest fine. Yeah, that was the time before. I, I'm troubled as well. Well, we have to decide. So by um, this record. <laughs> Um, I'll suggest that as to each of the violations, we impose a $1,000 fine and that we suspend the license for three days. So I, I agree with the imposition, or I find a violation of Rule 3.12, General Welfare, November 24, 2018 and a violation of Rule 4.16, Legal Conduct, November 24, 2018. And I agree with the imposition of a $1,000 fine as to each. I, I'm, I would, I'm, I'm leaning towards a seven-day suspension because I, I'm not sure it, the issue, the issue continues to linger. Mr. Greenfield. So I find a violation of Rule 3.12 on November 24th, general welfare, and would concur with a uh, $1,000 fine. Find a violation of Rule 4.16, November 24th, 2018, legal conduct, and also concur with a uh, $1,000 fine. I would agree with Commissioner Hafey and impose a seven day suspension. Um, this is a problem that I don't know that you're really getting the message. And the extra door is helpful, but doors, but if you come back again on this, sir, this is this is really really bad. So, when can you pick up the license? Uh, right after the hearing. Okay, so we'll make it effective immediately. Okay, thank you. So it's going to be three days or seven, seven days. days? Seven days. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Like, sir. I call Zippers for the record. Board of Zippers 1, investigation report, Inspector Andy Perez. Calling the, calling the next case, Shalha Anand, 5302 Frankfurt LLC, trading as Tusker Lounge, 5302 Frankfurt Avenue. It's a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. A violation of Rule 4.20C, small double I, class BD7 licensees, open and operating tavern at all times, October 30th, 2018, and a violation of Rule 3.08A, sanitation and safety, on October 30th, 2018. For the record, I'm Melvin J. Kavinsky, representing licensee. Would all of those involved raise their right hands, please? I <coughs> swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. So we have different kinds of violations. Do they admit or deny them? Well, I don't um, contest what Inspector Perez has put down on his um, report. Uh, I'd just like to ask one question of Inspector Perez. You mean Perez. about the temporarily closed violation or about the emergency yeah. door? Oh, okay. Okay. When you, who was in the back when you went in the back? No one was in the back. Okay, so there was nobody there? No. So I would say that in that violation, since there was nobody there, there was, uh, if that was, if you agree that the place was closed or temporary closed, there would be no need to have that door uh, open because three or four o'clock in the morning when you're closed, you wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have the door open anyhow. You'd have a dead bolt. So you're admitting the 4.20 violation and denying the 3.08 violation? Correct, and I have an explanation as to the 4.20, but I mean, it's, it did happen, all right? I'm gonna say it that way. Okay, um, well, let's hear your explanation as to that. Well, in, in the, the situation here is that they've been having a terrible problem of um, drug dealers in that area. And in fact, um, they've had a couple shootouts right out, right out in front of the place. I was gonna show you, um, 
some film of uh, people pulling up in a car and all of a sudden the door opens and two guys pull guns in there starting to right out in front of the place and there people there are afraid you know when people are coming in and people are coming into the um, uh, establishment and what they're doing is say that you're behind the fence I come in and while you're doing something the guy puts something here and I got and they make it and the guy they walk out and they're trying to get the police to stop them from coming in and making or putting a sale without buying anything did you Excuse me, uh, what's your name? We need your name, sir. Prince, Prince, Prince Anand. Anand. Huh? Prince Anand. Anand. A-N-A-N-D. A-N-D. It's his A-N-D. husband, I believe. Okay. So they are actually just, you know, hiding the guns. They say, because in our uh, uh, door, uh, we have five signs, you know, the bar is open, but you must submit your ID. Don't ask any question because they run inside, hide the gun. When they see the police officer, hide the gun, exchange the drugs. These are the videos we get on right away. They are hiding the guns inside, and we we found the guns. We called the police. They said right there is a gun. Somebody left the jacket inside. It has so two loaded guns here. So and they're coming inside. Let me ask you, where they're standing, is that just the where they speak to you for the package goods? This is package goods, and this is by I can, The lights went out, so it's hard to see. Yeah, uh, so this is uh, outside there. So, in other words, rather than be seen outside doing the transaction, they come into your store and do this. This guy, you know, they, you know, what they do when they see police officer, because we are the one who call the police all the time. They, they come inside and they say, we want to use the restroom or something. They exchange the drugs right there when the police officer is there, hiding the drugs right there. And the <coughs> police officer says, there's a jacket here. This guy just left inside. He bought the drink. He just left the jacket inside, and it has two loaded guns inside. And this is the video we, we get the North Eastern District all the time now. Because they had a shootout right out in front, right? Right here. This you can see them shooting at each other. They're shooting each other. He's pulling his gun. The inside guy is pulling his gun. See, they are pulling each other's gun here. So they're pulling, and now if you are able to see two shots outside right there. Um. My, my wife, my wife, she just went for the dinner that time. This happened right here. And this is the the they don't really you know the and you'll see the sh- three shots are coming out from there right here. Okay, so assuming that all of that is correct and uh, it is I guess a difficult neighborhood. I'm not familiar with the neighborhood. Okay. Better. And um, they they've been trying to get the police to cooperate and they've been giving them these films, I mean the video. And um, they've also, you know, had um, um Letters saying that they not a serve any minors, which is a this different. Was yesterday, some of them went and, um, so I mean, it's not. It well, didn't happen. Well, here's my question. I, so I didn't follow necessarily because of the a- illegal activity. Why was the bar closed? Because they were afraid to know who the person was about letting them in because they just had the shootout a couple of days before and they were finding these. Oh, guns. they thought it was one of the criminals coming in. Yeah, well, because there's nobody knew you know if it was a criminal or not. That's why he said it was temporarily closed. It wasn't like one of these things where he said it was closed, closed. They were okay. trying to get it to identify them to see whether or not, you know, the, the police could uh, do anything. Um, but but he looks so innocent. <laughs> you, <laughs> you weren't you weren't packing any heat, were you? No, I'm the uh, main problem is when they are shooting each other in outside. When somebody you know th- want to save his life, he's coming just inside the bar. And we have uh, like 15 size there. The bar is always open. You must deposit your ID before you enter to the bar. And that's, uh, this is. But he never got that far, right? No. No, no sir. No. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> what, and what's the story with the emergency rear door? So, you were saying it was 3 in the morning, but this says at 9.30 no, 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 p.m. I'm saying that they keep, if there's nobody in the, the establishment, they keep it closed for the very reason. If somebody gets back there, sometimes they open the back, that back door and they, they try to, put in, you know, a, a coat or where a gun's inside, so they try to keep it closed. Now, if there were people back there, they would have somebody watch them so they wouldn't be able to do that. And but back there is where the bar yeah, where section the bar is? is? Yeah. Okay. But is, aren't there concerns about having it deadbolted so that people can get out in the event well, that there was, there's nobody there, there's nobody But, but what in the event that there is someone? Right. Yeah, the deadbolt is just a, a latch. A latch. Like this. That's Why all. couldn't they just close it? So you're saying when no one's there, they just lock it? So they, nobody can come it's in a the bolt back. they push like this in here, and then when it's on, they bolt open it. Yeah, it's not like a deadbolt with a key, 
You know, what you're thinking yeah, about. No. I think there's a picture of it. Well, it says dead bolts, so that's why we're thinking that. Not with the keys. One at a time. Try, yeah, try and no, I think you see a picture of it. Don't you have a nice yeah, picture? I have don't a nice you? picture. Yeah, yeah. It is nice. See, it's not a, a, it's hard to, it's yeah. not a dead bolt. Okay, so. And then what you were thinking about something, you put a key, so you couldn't open it no matter what. So, Inspector Perez, was there no one there when you were there? There was no customer. There was a store clerk there working. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, commissioners have questions? No questions. No further questions. No questions. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Kennedy? No. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's a phenomenon that's going along in the, in the city where, uh, as I said to you before, and I'll say it again, is that we live in I don't care society. Nobody cares, and they don't take responsibility. They just assume, shoot it out and run into place and try to do something and try to respect somebody's business and someone else's life. Well, the situation that uh, Mr. Anand describes is uh, frightening and dangerous. I don't know how they can manage to maintain the business in such an environment, but that's you their, deci they, that's their they, decision. They, they try to do, and, and I don't know a lot of the people that have their uh, security cameras and so forth, they can link them in with the city on city link, whatever it is. But I don't know if anybody watches them to do anything about it because it seems like when they make a call or something, it takes so long. And it may be because the police are spread out. I mean, I'm not, for them in the common where you can see a known, known deal going down and then by that time and it happens and they're, they're gone because they're, look, they're, they can see a police coming in. And I think whatever reason why they put those lights on the police car, they have them lit so you can see them coming. Is, uh, there's got to be a theory behind it, but I think it tells everybody here they come. Okay. Um, on the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents, the admission as to the Rule 4.20 C, small double I violation, um, the testimony and proffers from counsel. I find a violation of Rule 4.20, small c, small double i, on October 30, 2018, and I'd impose a $1,000 fine and give 30 days to pay it, and I would find a violation of Rule 3.08, small a, on October 30, 2018, and I'd impose a $500 fine and give them 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.20, small c, uh, small two, small little i, uh, class B7, on October 30, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $1,000 fine, and I find a violation of Rule 3.08, small a, on October 30, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $500 fine with 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.20C, two small i, uh, on October 30th, and would concur with a $1,000 fine, and find a violation of Rule 3.08, uh, on October 30th and would it concur with the $500 fine. Good luck. Thank you. Do you want this back? That's or do you want it in the record? Oh, okay. And do you want this back? Yes. I wish there was a way. I understand. I do look at the date sometimes. Maybe three months this letter, but this. I call Zibitz. I call Zibitz for the record. What is with one investigation report? Inspector Andy Perez. Thank you. So, Mr. Ackers, you want to recall the uh, case from Club Okapi? Yes, Mr. Chair. Recalling Nikambi Jean Lima, Lima Systems LLC, Club Okapi 2219 West Pratt Street. This is a Class D BD7 beer wine liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.16 illegal conduct on November 16, 2018. Um, no one has approached on this. Uh, um, Ms. Russell has given me that uh, return on the service on a Rodney Bruce um, at 2219 West Pratt Street um, on January 1, um, served by Chase. I don't know who Rodney Bruce is, but um, apparently he was authorized to accept service. So shall we proceed? Um, who's going to testify? I don't think so. Have I you? have. 
I don't want a prior case, but I can redo it. I do. Identify yourself, please. Agent John Chris Malice, Baltimore City Liquor Board. When we're about November 16, 2018, at approximately 22, 10 hours, while on duty and working with the social task force, we arrived at 2219 West Pratt Street in the city of Baltimore, state of Maryland, to conduct inspections. We pulled up to the location an unmarked Baltimore police vehicle directly in front of the location. At the time, I and Detective Gatto observed a black female exit the club holding a clear plastic cup, which she was drinking from. We approached the female and asked her what was in the cup. At that time, she stated it was lime liqueur, and she had purchased it within the bar. We entered the location, spoke to the manager, and advised him of the violation. Inspections from various agencies were conducted, and we left the location without any further incident. It says here that you spoke with a Mr. Rodney Brown. Did that say Rodney Brown on? Did I read it wrong? Yes, yeah. it looks like Rodney Brown. Brown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, that's who signed off on the notice. Okay. Uh, and was he cooperative when you spoke with him? They were cooperative. Um, and what did they say? Uh, well, we were there to conduct other inspections. He said that the security didn't see her, must have not seen her. Um, there was security at every door. She walked right past the security. Okay. Uh, qu commissioners, have any questions? No questions. Pardon me. Right. Com commissioners, I believe somebody. Rodney Brown. Mr. Brown, come forward, please. So uh, you, we started because we waited and you were late. So um, the inspector has testified as to what happened and that after he saw the young lady drinking outside, he came in and he talked to you. Yes. And he swore. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. We swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. And um, he advised you and you said that uh, she had gotten past your security people. Is that correct? She had. She was like, yeah. But from my regular eyes, I was inside. So when I came outside, they was pulling up. And the young lady was sitting outside with a cup. But I don't know if she was purchasing from inside or she had it sitting in a vehicle and just talking to people outside. Because there were a few people laying around outside. And we was all inside operating. So he came and they came and did a thorough inspection. And pretty much went back out. But he said something to me about the young lady with the cup. Okay. And was Mr. Brown cooperative? He was. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions? No questions. No questions. All right, well, thank you. Um, I'm glad you showed up because I otherwise you wouldn't have. I was outside town of Park. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to downtown Baltimore. <laughs> uh, on the basis of the uh, materials contained in the charging documents and the testimony heard, I would find a violation of Rule 4.16 on November 16, 2018. Um, this is not a great record, Mr. Brown. I know you're not the licensee, um, but we have violations in 2012, 13, well, twice in 13, but that's five years ago. Um, so I would, in this instance, impose a $1,000 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, on November 16, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $1,000 fine. Is that for the cup outside? Yes. I find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, on November 16, 2018, and concur with the imposition of a thousand dollar fine. You have 30 days to pay. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. I call this for. I call this for the record. What is it? The one, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Gatto. What is it? The two, investigation report, Agent Chris Malice. Is that our docket, Mr. Akris? I believe that concludes our afternoon docket. Uh, it will be in recess until February 7th. Thank you. <laughs>